Let's look at some examples of how matrices represent linear transformations. Um, so for our first example, this is kind of the most common example. Um, so here we have a linear transformation from a Euclidean space to a Euclidean space. Um, we're using the standard basis for both Euclidean spaces. Uh, and we, ha and uh, we have a linear transformation that's represented by this matrix. <clears throat> now remember how representation works, representation of a linear transformation works, is uh, so our linear transformation goes like this. Uh, but the way representation works is we use the representation map relative to our basis to get to a Euclidean space. I know we started in a Euclidean space, but still, um, the way we the way we set representation up, we're obligated to use a represent, representation map to go to our, to go to uh, a Euclidean space, an isomorphic Euclidean space. Um, we do that on both sides. So this is another representation map. Uh, it, typically, this basis would be different than the one over here because typically these spaces are different. But in this case, since these are the same Euclidean space, I'm using the same basis on both the domain and codomain. Um, so that's why this is B and not D. Um, so R3. And then we have, so let me call this matrix A. <clears throat> right, we have this matrix A that defines a linear map from R3 to R3 by this matrix, multi matrix vector multiplication. So when we have a vector on the domain side, it gets mapped to A times that vector on the, uh, on the range side, uh, on the codomain side. <clears throat> OK, so um, what we will see, so I'm going to spoil the surprise here, but what we will see is in this situation, when we have two Euclidean spaces and we are using the standard basis, uh, this linear map up here is multiplication by A. So uh, H of V is A times V. Okay? But again, this is a, it is the most common case, but it is a special case where we are going from a Euclidean space to a Euclidean space, and we are using the standard bases for both Euclidean spaces. Okay, it doesn't have to be the same Euclidean space, but you do have to be using uh, the standard basis for each Euclidean space, whatever they are. Um, so in this special case, the linear map is not just represented by the matrix, it actually is equal to mul uh, matrix multiplication. So let me, see, l let me show you why that is the case. So, um, so let's compute. <laughs> let's start up here, and we'll compute this, the three sides of the square that we know about. Right? Remember, in principle, we don't know yet what exactly what the linear map H is. So to figure out what it is, we have to start in this upper left corner, do rep, do rep B, multiply by A, and then do the inverse of rep B. <clears throat> so let's take a vector in R3. For a general vector in R3, Right, we have to use variables to represent its entries because we don't know what its entries are. And we'll do rep b. Now remember, to calculate rep b, you write your vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So we are using the standard basis. So that's going to be a times 1, 0, 0 plus b times 0, 1, 0 plus c times 0, 0, 1. And then what rep b does is it pulls off the coefficients in order. Right, We have to keep these basis elements in, or, in order. Um, rep b just pulls off the coefficients and then stuffs them into a vector as entries. So a, b, c. Right? Okay. Now you can see, uh, <laughs> because we use the standard basis, the representation of this vector and the vector itself are the same. And that is only because we are using the standard basis. OK, so that does this part. Now to do the next part, we've found our representative, right? A, B, C, or we've found our representation of this vector. It's A, B, C. The representation is A, B, C. So now to go this way, we multiply this by A. So 
1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 3, minus 1, minus 5, 6. OK, and we're multiplying this by the representation vector, ABC. What do we get? <clears throat> we get, so remember, turn this sideways and sort of swipe it downwards. So we get A minus C. We get 2A minus B minus 3C. And then minus A minus 5B plus 6C. Okay, so now we have, we've found, we've gotten down to this corner. Now we do the inverse of rep B. So what is the inverse of rep B? Um, remember, in general, the inverse of, of a representation map is going to start at a Euclidean space. So let me, in our case, it's R3, but it might be something else. So let me write out what this inverse is in general. Um, so it starts at a Euclidean space. And what it gives you is it uses these entries as coefficients for the basis. So v1, beta1, if, if the uh, basis b is made up of beta1 through beta n, we get v1, beta1, plus dot, 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 down to vn, beta n. Right. So rep b throws away the basis elements and just keeps the coefficients. Rep B does the opposite. It takes the, takes the entries and uses them as coefficients on the basis vectors. All right. So to do this last side of the uh, square here, the right-hand side, we have to take these three entries and use them as coefficients for the basis vector. What basis? The standard basis, because that's what we said. So. Um, so doing this last map, we get the first entry from here, a minus c, times the first basis vector, which is 1, 0, 0, because we're using the standard basis, plus the second entry from here, 2a minus b minus 3c, times the second basis vector, plus uh, the third entry, minus a minus 5b plus 6c times the last basis vector, 0, 0, 1. OK. Now, if we do all of this arithmetic, of course, what we, <laughs> what we get is the vector we started with. We get a minus c, 2a minus b minus 3c, and uh, minus a minus 5b plus 6c, right? Which should come as no surprise, because re remember, our first step was to take rep b of a vector. And we noticed, since we're using the standard basis, the, repre the representation vector is the same as the vector we started with. Well, this is the same thing, right? Because we're, uh, because we're using the standard basis for R3, this is the representation vector. When you hit it with rep inverse, you get the same vector because we are using the standard basis. All right. Now, <laughs> observe that this vector, the final result up here, is what we would get by taking the vector we started with and multiplying it by the matrix A. So that verifies that in this special case, uh, the linear map represented by A is just multiplication by a. <clears throat> so this is true in general if you're starting and ending in a Euclidean space and you're using the standard basis for both Euclidean spaces. If you are not going from one Euclidean space to another, or if you are not using a standard basis, then there is no guarantee that this is true. So got to be careful. All right, so that's the first example. But again, it's the most common example of how matrices get used to represent linear transformations, going from Rn to Rm by just matrix vector multiplication. That's going to be like 95% of the cases that, that you deal with in practice and that we will deal with. All right, <clears throat> so second example. This time we're going to, we have a map going from P2 to R2. Uh, I must have meant R3. <laughs> Mm, no, what did I mean? This ma the reason I hesitate is this matrix is the wrong size to be going from P2 to R. I see what I did. This 
I, uh, to go from a three-dimensional space to a two-dimensional space, it has to be two by three, not three by two. So let me make this last row a column instead. Okay, so let's find h of uh, this polynomial. Okay, now again, keep in mind, if we're going to go from p2 to r2, First, we have to do, right, this is h, but we don't know a formula for h. We only know the matrix representing h. So what we have to do is, starting with a polynomial, first thing we have to do is calculate its, uh, the vector that represents it. And this is going to be an R3, because p2 is isomorphic to R3 via rep b. OK, so let's do that first. <clears throat> so what is rep b of 3 plus x minus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1 squared. So you might wonder, why, why did I write the polynomial this way? The reason is because you might end up with this sort of thing if you were using, if you were working with the basis 1, x minus 1, and x minus 1 squared. So what we're doing here is we sort of have a mismatch between the basis that we were working in and the basis that we're using for the representation. So we cannot just pull off these coefficients because this is expressed in a basis that's different than the basis of our representation. So instead, what we have to do is rewrite this polynomial in terms of this basis. Right? For polynomials, that's not hard. We just have to multiply everything out and combine like terms. But we are obligated to do it. So let's see. This one is just x minus 1. And then if we multiply this out and then distribute the minus 2, we're going to get minus 2x squared plus 4x uh, minus 2, right? OK, now we can combine like terms. So 3 minus 1 minus 2. So 0 times 1 plus, And then for our x terms, we have x plus 4x, so 5x plus. And then for our x squared terms, it's just minus 2x. So minus 2x, sorry, x squared. There we go. OK, now we have this polynomial written in terms of our basis, the basis that we're using for the representation. So what rep b does is it just pulls off the, uh, pulls off the coefficients for these vectors. And it does it in order, right? We have to keep this order the same as this order. OK, stand by. I need to plug in my laptop. OK, so we've done this first side of the square. Now we use this matrix. So let's call this matrix uh, H, I guess. So now to, to do this bottom side, to get from R3 to R2, we multiply by the matrix H. So um, 2, 4, 1, minus 1, 3, 1. Okay, and we're multiplying by the vector 0, 5, minus 2. You can see now why this matrix can't be 3 by 2. It's because then the matrix vector product wouldn't be defined. So working out this product, we get so 0 times 2, so 20 minus 2, 18. And then let's see, 0, 15 minus 2, so 13. OK, so now we're down here. Oh, and this is our 2 here. So right now I have to call this rep D and not rep B, because these bases are different, because they're for different spaces. So what do we do with this to get back up to uh, R2? I know we're in R2, but remember, the representative down here isn't necessarily equal to the uh, vector up there. So what we do, since we use these, co these entries as coefficients for the basis vectors. So to go to do this last step, we take our 18 times the first basis vector, which is 1, 0, since we're using the standard basis, plus 13 times the second basis vector, which is 0, 1. And of, of course, as usual, since we're using the standard basis for a Euclidean space, uh, the representative is the same as the vector. Right? So these are the same. OK, so uh, 
So what is h of this polynomial? It's this vector. Right? Start with the polynomial, write it in terms of the basis. Rep b pulls off the entries, multiply by the matrix, use the entries as coefficients for the basis on the codomain side. And that gives you the result of the linear transformation. OK. So find a general formula for h of ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's we can do that. We just have to do this exact same process, but for ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so first, let's do rep b of ax squared plus bx plus c. Fortunately, this polynomial is written in terms of our of the basis for p2 that we're using. So um, we can just pull off the coefficients, but we have to be careful. You have to put them in the right order. Right? This basis has 1 first, and then x, and then x squared. So the first entry has to be the coefficient for 1, which is c. And the second entry has to be the coefficient for x, which is b. And uh, the third entry has to be the coefficient for x squared, which is a. OK, like this. All right. Now for the next step, the bottom side of the square, we multiply this by our matrix, 2, 4, 1, minus 1, 3, 1, times C, B, A. OK, and this gives us uh, 2C plus 4B plus A, and minus C plus 3B plus a. Okay. And now we do rep b, uh, sorry, rep d uh, inverse, rep d inverse, to get from here to there. We put, use these as coefficients on the basis vectors. Um, again, we're in a special case where we're going from Euclidean space to Euclidean space with the standard basis. So uh, rep d inverse actually just gives us the exact same vector back. So 2c plus 4b plus a and minus c plus 3b plus a. OK, so this is h of ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. So starting with the polynomial, you write in terms of the basis, pull off the coefficients to get to see what rep, D, rep B does. Multiply by the representing matri matrix to get to your codomain Euclidean space. And then do the inverse representation on the codomain side to get back to your actual codomain space. All right. Uh, one more example. I think, yes, this is the last example. <clears throat> so we're going to go, we have a map from R2 to R3 represented by this matrix relative to these bases. So in this case, because we are not using the standard bases, um, we can't just do matrix vector multiplication. right? We have to actually go through the whole, <laughs> the whole square. So to find f of 9, 5, the first thing we have to do is write 9, 5 in terms of this basis. So we need to know what is 9, 5 as a linear combination of, oh, need a plus here, of these two basis elements. Right? We need to know a and b before we can write down uh, what rep b. So this is b, and this basis is d. So before we can write down rep b, we have to know what is 9, 5 in terms of the basis vectors from b. All right, uh, so. In general, we would need to solve some linear system to fit, find the right coefficients. But I've kind of cooked up this example so I can do it uh, sort of in my head. This ought to be, I think, 7 times 1, 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 1, right? Yeah, that's right. OK, so uh, we need to know what is rep b of 9, 5. So that's rep b of 7 times 1, 1 
plus 2 times 1 minus 1. Okay, and re now that we have this written in terms of the basis b, rep b just pulls off the coefficients. So this is 7, 2. Notice that in this case, because we aren't using the standard basis, the representation vector is not equal to the vector we started with. OK, now that we have the representation, we can do our matrix multiplication. So 1, 2, 2, 1, minus 3, minus 2, times 7, 2. So this is, let's see, so 7 plus 4 is 13, uh, 11, sorry. Uh, 14 plus 2 is 16, and then minus 21 minus 4 is minus 25. OK. All right, so this is after matrix multiplication. Now we need to do the inverse of rep D. And remember what the inverse of a representation function does. It takes these three coefficients coming from the entries of the matrix, and it uses them as coefficients for the basis vectors in D. So those basis vectors are up here, 1, 1, minus 1. And then 16 gets used, since 16 is the second entry, it gets used as a coefficient for the second basis entry. So 1, minus 1, 0. And then the third entry in this representa representation vector uh, is used as a coefficient for the third basis vector, 0, 1, 1. OK. And now that we have this written down, now we can do the arithmetic to, uh, to work out what this is in R3. So uh, you get to watch me do some arithmetic, I guess. Uh, 27 minus 25 is 2. And then let's see, 11 minus 16 is minus 5. Minus 25 is minus 30. And then minus 11 plus 0 minus 25. So that's negative 36, I guess. OK, so this is f of 9, 5. OK, all right. So um, and right, the, the thing to n notice here, the reason why I do this example is because if we just multiplied this vector 9, 5 by this matrix, we would not get this. I'll let you check, but you don't get that. So this just goes to show that the matrix that represents a linear transformation, even if you're going from one Euclidean space to another, the matrix that represents a transformation depends on the basis. It depends not only on the transformation, but also on the basis.